want to welcome everybody to our Wednesday training. And of course, for those of you who don't know, we do this every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And we try to cover as many uh, varieties of topics as we can. And of course, uh, with most of it aimed at how to make the Chamber of Commerce your business partner. And that has been the crux of uh, the first, I believe we're now at uh, eight training videos. And each of them have had a lot of significance uh, and, and so very, very varied uh, in their concepts and, and uh, in the, the training that was received from it. Uh, today, we have Carl Slicer, who is a fellow influencer. And Carl has put together, uh, from what we chatted about, uh, apparently a, a very unique and interactive uh, presentation today on how to best contact um, contact what, Peter or Carl? What was it? How to contact what? I'll come on. Let you get the title, Carl. You you got a mic there? That might help if I unmute it, right? Yeah, that'd be good. Now, what's the title of your course today? How to contact the uh, the decision makers. Um, the sub the subtitle to that is how to get a how to get past the human resource people that uh, can't help you out. There you go, there you go. Can, can, can you get closer to your mic, Carl? Get a little bit more volume on that booger. That ain't better? Yeah, that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm gonna turn it over to Carl. Hi, Is Bob, good to have you on board, buddy. Uh, I'll turn it over to Carl, take it away, my man. Well, in the last uh, 25 years in business, there's a few people that I have looked for uh, information for influence, and I'll refer to three of them uh, who are authors uh, and accomplished uh, business owners. Alan Weiss, for one, who is probably one of the bigger names in the business consulting world, uh, Casey Truby, who is an accountant CPA who teaches mergers and acquisitions. And then there's Jay Abraham, who just, uh, you know, charges people seven figures every year just to go around and talk at uh, how to uh, find new ideas of, of making more money with a business that you currently have, uh, as well as um, other um, positions that he takes on, on how to develop yourself in, in key positions. And all of those people talk about uh, referrals when you're finding business, and we all live on referrals. Sometimes we don't know well enough that referrals are a uh, staple of our business, and so therefore we don't always pay attention to it, but I think it still signifies the homegrown basics when you get back to basics of what you are and, and how you're doing it, that referrals are a strong root of your business. Let's put it that way. It's a great tree that grows and they have strong roots because referrals are a two-way street. Uh, when I take a referral uh, and I love to give referrals, they um, they come along with a license where a lot of people don't want to do referrals because they're afraid of the outcome with the other person they're referring. Well, um, I'm more interested in jumping in the water and figuring out the temperature after I get in as opposed to taking the temperature of the water first before I jump in. And I will always give that forward credit to Let's take this forward and make sure that we can do what we're supposed to be doing in the referral by giving them a, some pieces of information about the person so that they can bottom line make their own decision. They don't have to engage with the person, but there may be a few points that you really, really adore uh, about that person that um, you like being able to offer that person's services. Um, I was just dealing with a company that started yesterday morning that I was telling Chris about. This is, this is a big, big, big operation, and I could not get through the customer service, whether it's telephone or email or smoke signals or GPS coordinates. 
I mean, I, I owned a collection agency for over 15 years, and I know how to find people. Let me tell you something. This company was rock solid, tough. So what did I do? I reverse engineered and I went to the top decision makers. I got a hold of two people. There were co-founders in this company and I, and, I, and I asked the baited question, are you guys still in business? Holy cow. He fell off his chair when he heard the question because he couldn't believe that somebody would come along and I said, well, maybe you need to hire somebody to go out there and make phone calls on your behalf to dial into the company and see what it's like to have an account relationship. The whole thing was centered on this. Can't get my password to reset. Well, did you check your spam? Yeah, I checked my spam. How well do I know that? I own AppRiver, which is a serious program when it comes to spam and malware and so forth and so on. I tried the main phone number and I got a Google Talk phone number. Then I tried, a, I found another phone number under the pricing page, and that one was disconnected. Now I'm getting leery about if this is a legitimate operation. And when I actually, um, so I started that yesterday morning, and I just talked to customer service about an hour before we went on today, and now I'm starting to hear back from the co-founders, oh yeah, Corbin is going to be reaching out to you, blah, 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 blah. Well, if I love the program that they provide and their customer service rates a one out of 10, I'm gonna have a hard time referring them out to anybody else. But I went to the top decision makers that may, may be making $5 million a year, $50,000 a year. I don't know what that is, but if their co-founders and I can't get through their own people in the middle, then something's wrong with that relationship. So I have that problem too. I struggle with being able to keep myself on key with speaking with the top decision makers, which are you know usually the, the ones at the top or somewhere in management, um, I deal with human resource uh, people probably somewhere between 25 to 50 times a week. And um, it's, a, it's a hot and cold situation. Sometimes you'll get some really great connections there and other times it's just, um, they really don't like working where they're at and they don't wanna oppose management in recommending something that is gonna be a tough uphill battle. So. Uh, the decision makers are the ones that are uh, key. I'll give you an example. Good speaker by the name of Doug Comstock. This guy sells defibrillators uh, by the hundreds to companies. He goes in to speak at a doctor's group, uh, I think it was last winter, in the Hartford area. And he's got about 100, 150 people in the group. And they gave him, I think, 25 minutes to speak as keynote. He's into his speech about 10 minutes, and he notices that he's starting to lose their attention. And so next thing is like, oh, my goodness, what am I going to do, blah, blah, blah. So he finishes up his 25-minute obligation. But what he didn't realize was is that after he was done, the doctors were coming up to him and saying, I need – a." I need a defibrillator in my office. Okay, how many offices you got? I got seven offices. Okay, call this person. This is who I need. Boom, boom, boom. He got to the decision makers, and those decision makers knew in less than seven minutes that they needed his product. So the other 18 minutes was basically, they're talking amongst themselves about the next day. These are smart people that you're dealing with. They can come to a decision very, very quickly. So how do I do that? I talk. Uh, in emails, I write articles, I make phone calls, I attend chamber events, and I look for key owners to pick up on the discussions of what keeps you up at night. Those are the things that I want to know. What what bothers them? What What's the next thing coming down the road? Did the state of Connecticut change a new law? And now we all got to deal with the aftermath of the tide that's coming. 
And uh, by the way, uh, are you going out to go play golf tomorrow? Well, yeah, I'd like to play golf, but I got to stay up and worry about such and such. So I'm looking for feedback from the group, if you don't mind, on what avenues you use. Uh, and are you making sure that you're keeping key decision makers in mind when you're chasing your uh, prospects? Anybody want to cue in for that? Okay, good night, Johnny. That's all we have for <laughs> Come on, Judith. I know you're smart and you got all your stuff going on about Canada with your 30,000 contacts. I'm sure that you can scroll through and find a few that say chief decision maker. Now that was 60,000 contacts, Carl. 60,000. See, I'm, 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 I got to update your resume. No, it's okay because half of them are dead now. <laughs> <laughs> I was young. What can I say? Um, so far, I haven't had all that much trouble reaching the people that I need to reach. Um, I might go through LinkedIn or uh, I use, oh shit, what's the name of the program? Just give me a sec. That's for Instagram, believe it or not. Uh, but it susses out what I need. Um, I tags, I use that, but it also give me what I need. Uh, I and I'll just Google the company, and and um, I don't know. I get on the phone and chat, and I get what I want. <laughs> but uh, so far, so far, so good. I can't complain. But that doesn't mean that it's going to work forever. And I'm certainly open to uh, to other suggestions. Carl, are you talking about finding the decision maker on a phone call or in what way? Are you, are you, what way you suggest that you find a decision maker as far as the platform you use? Well, I think it depends on, on the, the business owner, what they're trying to do. Again, I do background checks for employers. So I, I write horror stories uh, or close calls that have taken place recently um, so like, for instance, uh, I'll give you one that I just wrote in the last two weeks on LinkedIn and this, um, so, uh, within the last three or four months, I'm in Connecticut, just outside of Hartford. Uh, we've had a rash of car burglaries at night, particularly in the uh, warm weather where the, the, uh, the riffraff come into the neighborhoods and they rifle cars looking for various things that they can steal. Well, in Newington, Connecticut, there was a, uh, a gun that was stolen. And then in Ellington, Connecticut, which is probably for a 20, 25 minute ride east of there, another gun was stolen. The ATF gets involved, which is your US federal department. They track down the culprits. Long story, short is they've been arrested and they're being processed in federal court. My point to my article of the nightmare is uh, employers are always looking to go on the cheap as much as possible when it comes to background checks. So when you say to them, you have to do a search to see A, where the person has lived, B, does he have any other, he or she have any different names, C, do your state search, and D, do your federal courts, they get to the point like, well, I don't want to do that much and I don't want to spend them. I just want a simple background check. Well, the problem is this. When, when, when those guys are convicted for stealing those guns, it's going to be in the, the database conviction is in the federal courts, not in the state courts. So if I have a customer that wants to do Connecticut only, he's not going to see the federal offense that took place in the time in jail that they did. So I have to write these articles of awareness to say, is this bothering you? Did you, did you have a situation like this? Give us a call. Have you, uh, is your current background check company not caring about your welfare and the type of people that you're hiring that, you know, I mean, can you imagine hiring one of these guys? The reason why they're stealing the guns is they're selling them for 900 bucks a piece so they can re, you know, buy more Oxycontin and heroin. I don't think I want any of them on my payroll. 
So you you use the uh, uh, the pain factor a great deal as, as far as your initial contact, but does does that really get to the the uh, decision maker? And if I write the articles properly, where they're in that venue, if it, if it's uh, a local uh, tit for tat for the chamber, if it's in the patch dot com. Uh, the newspaper, if, if it's on, uh, uh, again, LinkedIn, it, depending upon the, the venue, I'm hoping that they're coming across and seeing that. Um, when it comes to uh, writing a letter and sending it directly to the, to the CEO, I don't think anything is really working these days. Please fill me in if different, Judith, unless you're stamping it with a wax seal. Uh, I suppose I could send it along with a gift, like a, you know, a, a drone or something like that. And say, you know, or how about how about if I said I did one years ago, where I, I mailed out uh, a little packet of aspirin, and I go, you know what? If you got a headache, take these two, and then call us tomorrow. We'll help you with your background checks. My mom thought that was a great a, a great way. You know, and you want to know something? I mailed out a hundred of them, didn't get one phone call. <laughs> Yeah. Great ideas, right? Great ideas. Exactly. <laughs> so so I, we're constantly testing the markets. Go ahead. So I have a question. Um, when we go to a chamber event, uh, it, it's, it, there seems to be a, um, a lot of decision makers in the groups, but every once in a while you encounter uh, what I'll just refer to as a salesperson. <laughs> and... Um, when it comes to to the, um, to some of us that are doing uh, marketing services, et cetera, obviously we need to talk to someone above that person. Uh, what would you suggest in in how to go about uh, asking for an introduction or uh, you know um, you know basically how to recommend to that person that they pass your information along as opposed to them just being fully focused on, well, uh, you know, if you're not going to buy my stuff, I'm going to just talk to someone else. Okay. Good question, Peter. Tell me who your perfect client is. <laughs> Trick question. No. Um, I guess my perfect client would be, uh, a, 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 a like a, a retail or restaurant, uh, type shop with a with an owner. Um, it could be a service industry, but one of one of the things I'm 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 thinking of is uh, I, I encountered a a sales rep uh, for uh, financial products, and uh, he was one of many reps in his office. So I would want to speak to either the office manager or the person that actually uh, owns the agency. Um, okay, and Peter, tell me, hi, Devin. Peter, tell me again, what's your product? Uh, I do marketing services, uh, web design, you know, everything digital. Okay. So the last client that you put over the top that thinks you are the best thing since sliced bread, what did you, what value did you drop on his, in his plate? What did you do for her or him? Uh, I increased their leads by about tenfold. I think you answered yourself. I think I think you have to reverse engineer it and make sure that you keep, you know, the old kiss, keep it simple, stupid. Make sure that you're answering the value uh, that's involved for the person. You know, I don't know much about your business, but if you came to me and said, Carl, I can get you uh, appointments with um, 10, 10 uh, automobile uh, general managers, new and used car, I can set 10 appointments a month. I would say that's fantastic because now I can start figuring out, does it take one out of 10 or two out of 10 to close a deal? If I got one car dealership that's doing, you know, 400 employees a year with a 20% turnover rate, that's 80 people are hiring if they're dropping a hundred bucks per person for, you know, background and, and drug testing, you do the numbers. So that one out of 10, I'll do that all day long with you. So I, I think if your experience shows that you're creating value for your current clients, I think the stories with those 
successes are going to appeal to the decision makers. Now, so, so, no, I, I understand that, but, but, but if I'm not talking to the decision maker and I'm talking to someone that, that needs to tell me who the decision maker is or make an introduction, how do I get that person to do that? I think you, I think need, I think you need to turn them into your, your, your best refer. If you okay. were, see, that makes sense. That, that it, makes perfect here's sense. the problem, Peter. I don't have a problem referring you. If I like you, that's cool. If I love you, I go to the uh, to the extents that are possible, right? Right. And, and my reputation, I've been in business for 25 years. For so giving somebody referrals, not going to put me out of business if it's if it's not a done deal, okay? Right. And I, and I don't have those inhibitions that are built up like, oh, I hope I'm doing a great job by doing this. We're all adults in the fact that we own businesses here. We make decisions every day on that, right? So I, I think that person, if, if you're trying to get to the key decision maker on that, I think it's going to take more than one conversation. Uh, coffee, one-on-one, -on -one is a great situation. And then a success story that they can – analyze and compare how it affects and creates business for them. Okay. That's what I would do. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for the question. Devin, Devin you want to say hi? You have a <laughs> question today? You're on mute, Devin. I have a question. After Judith. Devin. After Devin. Go ahead, yeah. Judith. I think. Uh, so you made contact with someone, and uh, you weren't as organized as you thought you were, and you kind of screwed it up. How do you save your butt? You messed up on the first contact. Um, yeah, the the first the first kiss. Yeah. I think it. I think it depends on what the mess up was. Is it just something that was. Uh, missed a phone call or did you present a deal and and they just they gave you no feedback on on the presentation um, actually I was just um, it was just first contact and I it was an inquiry to find out who in the organization I should be speaking with but I knew at the time that I'd gotten off on the wrong foot I'd as we do sometimes, right. and I hadn't been an organized, as organized as I thought, hadn't perhaps rehearsed what I was going to say, because you guys know me, I don't, um, but I should for some things. Uh, so I learned a lot, but I'm now going back to that person for the second touch, and, and that's to set up a meeting. But I know I blew it the first time. Like I sounded like a fool. <laughs> Well, we all we all have bad days, right? Um, yeah, we all we all struggle with them. And I can tell you something that uh, when my mom was treating for pancreatic can cancer, um, it was two and a half years uh, before she died. And I thought how sad it was when certain people uh, met her in her life where she was a a grown because the way the cancer was taking its toll. I think we've all been in that situation where we've had a rough, a rough day and we're not at our best. So I, I think we can forgive ourselves, number one. Number two, on the other side, that person may have been jammed up as well and they may have been having a bad day and had nothing to do with you, right? So, I mean, we're always, ready to criticize ourselves first, right? Um, I think probably the biggest thing is you've got to do better the next time. Absolutely. And, and the yeah. other thing is, it better, be, it better not be the last prospect that you're having. No. Right? No. Yeah. So it is, it is possible to come back and, and pick it up uh, where you left off and try to find common ground with the person to rebuild I mean, and say, hey, you know what? I think we got off the, the you know, off to a bad start. Can we start over, please? 
And it wasn't a difficult call. It wasn't, uh, there wasn't tension or stress. There was actually some laughter um, uh, when I had said, well, I, I said something about the fact I wasn't quite as prepared for this as I thought. And what a, what a, I've blown it up. Um, and she laughed. But, uh, but I just know that I didn't make the kind of impression at all that I wanted to make. So uh, I guess gather all my ducks in a row and go at it again. Well, was it a phone call or was it a video call? It was a phone call. So try a video call. Maybe, maybe they, maybe you can talk about the beach that's in your backyard. Start a phone call or something. You know, ask them if they like to go fishing. My wife and my my mother were big fishermen. I'll come up with something. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I know no, we all make we all screw up now and again. That's the way it is. Carl, your what what is your best uh, advice as far as getting past the gatekeeper? I think it's a matter of looking at it from a, a baseball player's point of view. It, it just cracks me up that baseball players, uh, if you're batting 400, that means you're only hitting the ball 40% of the time, but they make millions of dollars at the same time. But if you don't get up to bat the very first time, you need to try it again or maybe set it aside and come back again. But I think that um, the bigger the potential, you have a you have something invested in it where you want to prove your worth. Maybe you also need to go at at a parallel situation where, if you know the industry that the person is in, maybe you can maybe you can touch uh, a parallel person on LinkedIn with that person that has, uh, you know, that they're in the community, maybe maybe you can look at it and say, hey, you know what, they they belong to the San Diego, uh, you know, Chamber of Commerce, and I'm going to go look up, see who I can contact, who's a member out there in San Diego, and, um, and start getting in that way, and or pick up the phone and call the executive director at the Chamber of Commerce and say, my name is nobody, and I don't know nothing from nowhere, but I want to make an introduction with this person at San Diego Chamber of Commerce. Can I make a donation to your chamber to help your, your operations here? But I would love to get a hold of Bob. Can you tell me what might be a better way to get a hold of Bob? Well, do you want to fly out there? I don't know what kind of a what kind of a client they may be, or, you know, do you want to take your, your net jet and fly out there or what the case may be, but it's, it's all reverse engineering. And you know what, you guys have been at this a long time. You, you know, you know how to pick these up and reverse engineer them. Devin. Yes. How's it going everybody? Good Devin. How are you? I'm doing great. Just had a little bit of a break, so I decided to chime in. The other day, well, yesterday, um, I had contacted um, the one of the chambers, and they haven't even updated the website. So I was trying to get a hold of somebody that was even <laughs> that was actually not working for the city, um, but she was the executive director, and I I either spoke to the president, which she didn't really say she was a president. Um, um, she just said this to the chamber, so and so. So I'm gonna have to follow up, but I'll probably just give them a phone call and let them know about the website not being updated. I don't know how long ago that the executive director is no longer with them. So I mean, that was just a initial call, I'm trying to yep. get a hold of the executive director to, to contact with them. And what is it again? Your business does. So we do reputation management for the businesses and we work with, with directly with the chambers. Okay. So all you need to do is, is uh, probably call the most three common banks in that, in that town that the chamber's in and they'll be able to tell you right off the bat because you know, darn tooting that every Tom, Dick and Harry banker is on the board of directors there for, for some reason or another. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and if well, you can't, if you can't, give me the name and address and I'll do a center point because I have the entire white pages on, on my system and I can, I can track down any banker, any distance 
any name, any phone number, you name it, it's there and I'll give it to you. And I'll even give you an Excel list if you want. <laughs> cool. Perfect. Yeah, Perfect. I might actually have access to this. So Chamber of Commerce might be a business as well. So I might be able to just be able to pull that off the information for them up as well. Hey, hey Devin, have you done um, reputation improvements with veterinary hospitals? No, I have not. You know what? You might you might want to consider veterinary because um, that's one they're always trying to improve their reputation. And if their reputation improves, then they get a higher cash flow rating when they flip and sell the business too. Hmm. Interesting. Quite, what, what about it? Quite often, they're not members of the Chamber of Commerce because they don't think that the local people want to have anything to do with taking care of cats and dogs when in fact that's that that's the opposite. So you might be actually promoting the chamber membership in the in the contact of doing so. You're a good guy for recommending the local chamber that they that they can join and increase their awareness and productivity and their reputation for the system. So again, if you go back to if, you, if you're doing something for somebody before you ask for the business, that puts you in a better light of, of serving others and making, it, making your um, experience with them a pleasant one, as opposed to you're calling up the phone saying, can I sell you this? Can I sell you this? Can I sell you this? That's, we, need, we need to uh, get out of that habit because it uh, quite often uh, gets us burned and we have to work a lot harder. Does that help? Yeah, that helps. But uh, I was just thinking, um, started photography, I could help them with their photography as well. As far as I know, there's um, even local, um, we have a lo local um, basically shelter, you know, a dog shelter. I could probably improve their reputation as well. Well, dog shelters are usually owned by a town in, in my state, and the, 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 state, the towns don't really care about their reputation, but vets are, oh. are private, and, um, and they're, they're always in need. They're, vets are like, here's your best ones up here, and they're making a lot of money. The ones down here are struggling to make any money. That's the way I look at it. But yeah, you yeah, want to... They're nonprofits and they get quite a bit of money from, you know, local entities. Well, going back to the chamber question, who needs, who needs the chamber situation? Does the chamber need the member more than the individual business or does the business need the chamber more and vice versa? So that, that's what I would key off from. Mm -hmm. who, who needs more in that valuable situation? But, um, and I, and I purpose, so I, I, I dance. I'm 61 years old and I love to dance. I go out two to three times a week and I dance um, with, a, with what is called West Coast Swing. But I'll tell you what, every time I meet somebody, if they're new, I introduce them to others. If somebody comes along and sits down next to me, I, was all, I will always turn around and say, Bob, do you know Sally? Sally DeNeal, Bob. Oh, by the way, Sally works at the Chamber of Commerce and Bob, Bob owns a veterinary hospital and I, and I, and I make them feel comfortable. So it's just a friendly thing to do, but at the same time, you're, you're creating a position for your, uh, a reference of yourself to be a person in the back of their mind saying, this is a guy that I can go to He's friendly and open. Maybe I can ask him a question. So um, who is your number one dream client for reputation? Somebody who's got a really bad reputation or a really great reputation? Carl, Carl if, I could, if I could interrupt for a moment. Yep, go ahead. If we could bring this back around to the topic a little bit Sorry. more, if, and in the process, uh, I'd like to, uh, if, if you don't, with your permission, I'd like to ask Mary Sloan to jump in here, uh, if you don't mind, Mary. Absolutely. Uh, and get, and just get your opinion on how you actually 
get to the decision maker in the in the quickest and most efficient way possible. How, how do you approach it? Well, my business is tiny businesses. Um, and the challenge, of course, is oftentimes that a uh, decision maker isn't present. They often aren't at the business on a regular basis. So it's kind of going through a manager. And um, mo mostly it's just asking questions to which they can't say no, so that they kind of will in interact and get um, a conversation started. Like I start mostly with contests or events that will get more business and attract more business for whatever it is. And um, it costs them nothing to do it. I may be looking for a $50 gift certificate to attract attention, or we may be running an event to, let's say it's a restaurant, um, and we might be running an event that's gonna be for Mondays, which are slow. So you pick a Monday in the month and you do an event called, you know, Monday, um, Mar um, Margarita Madness. So you ha kind of have a conversation with them about what would really get people around them excited. So it's a really non-confrontational, not even like a business conversation. It's really all about them and it's all about their business and what um, I can bring to that business. And after that, we start a relationship and see where that goes. Very good, very good. Uh, I'm sorry, Carl, I jumped in there. Please go right ahead. Okay, I, I'm glad you're keeping me on track here because I'm, I'm always worried about delivering in so little time. I, I sometimes expand upon way too far. Scott, are you able to uh, speak to us today? Scott? How about Scott, snap out of it. <laughs> Peter, are you in there? Hello, come in, Peter. How about, how about Bob? Get Bob over there. See what he's doing. Oh, oh, Peter's un, unmuted. Go for it, Peter. Uh, well, I was just answering your question. So, hi. Hi, Peter. Peter, what kind of business are you in? So we talked earlier. Uh, I was the one that mentioned the direct uh, digital marketing for businesses, web design, yep. et cetera. Okay. All right, and uh, is Bob able to respond there? Bob Minkin. No, Bob? How about Rick? Well, I am here. Uh, I as well uh, am in the digital marketing arena, and uh, I do focus on uh, Chamber of Commerce, not necessarily local. I found a successful way to approach them uh, via remote access. And I'm working with uh, two chambers right now that uh, I expect to be in a very explosive mode in the next few months. And I'm working directly with either the president or the executor director with the approval of the board. So I'm in a uh, pretty uh, prime position with both of them and sort of working it uh, at the speed of which the executive director and or president feels is best and appropriate for their members. So you're, you're working on positioning yourself then? Um, I, my position is pretty solid. Uh, the primary chamber that I'm working with um, has a lot on their plate. It's an extremely active executive director that is very, very, very much involved in the community and helping its members. Uh, so one of the products that was uh, released uh, during the month of May was a mobile PWA um, that uh, they are very fond of because it offers the ability to stay connected with their members and they're not ready to market the next series of products that they absolutely love. They sort of want to time these out so that everything doesn't come out in one month. They have other things that they can release and announce in a more grander way. So I'm actually just following their lead and working with them. So somebody's a conduit 
to help you get to the decision makers? Well, that's a conduit to the members. Yep. I've already cleared the decision makers within the chamber 100% uh, with my product assortments. And now it's just a matter of working with the executive director with her flow and feed to their members. Yeah. Are you finding that effective, uh, Rick? A little frustrating. I certainly would like to move quicker than uh, their game plan, but I do have a presentation scheduled in their July 11th roundtable breakfast where I will be presenting another one of the products. Uh, so just a matter of waiting that out. Uh, but the release of the first product, which is a, uh, a PWA, which is a mobile app, was very well received. Uh, the members are absolutely loving it and using it, you know, pretty much on a daily basis based upon the stats that I'm able to, uh, to gather. And I've actually been approached by two of their members uh, that are looking to purchase uh, this directly from me. Can I ask what does PWA stand for? Uh, PWA stands for Progressive Web App. Okay. And, and uh, most of the apps that we have on our phone and experience now are called native apps, yeah. where a developer or a designer actually has to develop two separate platforms, one for the Android and one for the iOS. Is that, is there a, is there a good software that uh, allows you to do that then? To, um, to create it? Yeah. Ajax, uh, not Ajax, but there's another one, right? No, I'm working with a company called Apper. Okay. Uh, and uh, what it provides is you can create one platform in a fraction of the time, and it's literally um, able to work on regardless of the platform, whether it's an Apple, iOS, or the Android, in addition to being able to work on a basic computer, and you do not have to go to any app store to buy it or download it. Gotcha. gotcha. So okay. Pretty, pretty new and up and coming uh, strategy for uh, mobile apps that I believe at some point could dominate the market. So let me ask you this. If you take the, the most uh, common chamber, or let me put it another way. If you were to refer to the Chamber of Commerce that you've been working with together the most, would those people on the board be able to A, take your call and discuss this one-on-one -on -one, and or B, refer your product? Uh, it would be A and B. I do have a relationship uh, close enough with the executive director and with the chairman of the board uh, where I could pick up a phone immediately and they have agreed to endorse this already. So what do you think is the, the, the best situation or, or what, what tool are you using to make that, that you go through to make the connection work? Uh, that's still in the workings. Um, when we do roll this out to it, their members, we're actually going to have a, a uh, uh, a program and a landing page that will lead them through a funnel to make them number one understand the value of it number two uh, educate them more than they know right now and number three facilitate the engagement of them so, so that's you're using, what we're working on so you're using the uh, the influence of the chamber to go directly to the decision makers Right. Uh, that is correct. The decision makers that are members within the chamber. Correct. Okay. So you've got a direct, a direct target there without going through a gatekeeper of any kind. Yeah. I've already got the approval of the gatekeeper and she's literally my spokesperson. Right. Well, that's, that's certainly one way to, uh, to avoid having to worry about uh, getting to the decision maker right there. That's an excellent way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm pretty fortunate and very excited about uh, how this is rolling out. Good job. Thank you. I've got to go soon, but I did want to let Carl know I appreciated what he said. And um, Carl, my name is Scott Powell, and it's nice to meet you. Um, I think um, one of the things when 
people like Judith was saying that she has a problem. I had a, a friend years ago um, tell me two things. Uh, she said, Scott, you have got to learn to laugh at yourself because everybody else is. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing that she said is don't worry about what other people think about you because they rarely do. <laughs> and that's two things that really help me if I'm ever trying to call and talk to anybody and I'm afraid. Um, I use humor with myself to leverage myself into just going ahead and calling because um, people don't, they, they really, they, they're, they're thinking about themselves. So I, they're preoccupied with themselves. So I don't really have to worry too much what kind of an impression I've made. Um, if I feel like I made a mistake, they probably don't even remember. So mm -hmm. I've got to try to keep that in mind and just keep picking the phone up and calling somebody else. And then the last thing is I, I found it interesting when you were asking people who their uh, number one target client is, mine is the one who will keep paying me. <laughs> just go on right. an automatic yes. draft and just keep paying me. <laughs> exactly. Good yeah. target. Good target. <laughs> <coughs> but I didn't. I didn't really have any questions, Carl. But I just want to let you know that I appreciated what you said, and uh, got a lot out of it. And I look for looking forward to uh, to listening to the replay. And, uh, and thank you very much for with what you shared today. It's going to help me. Thank you for the feedback. That's appreciated. I can tell you, Toastmasters love feedback. That's for sure. <laughs> do, do you want to see uh, Joe? Do you have anything uh, to? Any experiences you've had getting to a decision maker in your uh, your business? I'm the quiet guy. You remember me? Yeah, I do. I know. <laughs> um, it's it's you know, okay. Just keep on trying. Basically, you gotta keep on pumping. I mean, OSHA is an easy way to do it, but you gotta keep on pushing to get in. Basically, but then once you get in, you get the referrals, so that that makes it a lot easier. That's all I can say right now, my friends. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Okay, Joe. Thank you, Joe. 12 I think factor. I thought I use humor, uh, which is kind of a given. And I know that um, a couple of times when they said, I've spoken with the receptionist, let's say, and, and I'll, I, there's someone specific that I'm looking for. Uh, but they're high up. And I say, well, I could let you talk to someone. So I go, well, what goes that going to do me? And, and I'll actually just go right out and say, well, if you were me, would you want to talk to that person? What are they going to do? Give <laughs> me up. Beam me upstairs, girl. Let's do this. And they do. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I always find humor disarms most everybody. So I, I appreciate that, Judith, very much. <laughs> Judith, I thought you had a real river in your backyard there with beautiful beach umbrellas and people out there. <laughs> drinking under the cabana and sipping their mint juleps until you got up and walked away and I could see it was a green screen situation. Oh yeah. Well that's Mary Machi. I'm in Montreal. You gotta keep up with me, Carl. <laughs> I I thought it was the St. Lawrence River for Craig's sakes. That's about the bluest river going in Canada. Well there you go. I thought it was Melba, right? <laughs> I tried to put a picture of Montreal up but it was too dark. So on the green screen, it just there you go. doesn't look good. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'll tell it a, a story as far as the gatekeepers and the, the uh, influential people. And actually, I'll, I'll roll it back a few years when I had a sports marketing company. Uh, because at that point in time, I was dealing with the NFL. So when you get to deal with the NFL and you, you uh, call up the uh, Chicago Bears office, more than just one gatekeeper there. You've got a whole bevy of people there. Right. And don't even consider calling the uh, uh, New York office of the NFL in Park Avenue because that's, that's even worse. So I had, uh, I had various ways of doing it. And, of course, this has uh, been before some of the great technology that we have now. But it was always an initial thrust of some sort. Uh, back then, it was either a, a, a personal letter or a, a phone call. Uh, we didn't have the advantage of finding them on LinkedIn or anything like that. But 
what I normally would do was is fairly simple. I would just simply uh, get the person's name and ask ask for him by name, even uh, just going direct. And I found that well, not easy to do, but not that hard to do either. The uh, uh, the people that answered the phone uh, to me, they seem like that if you knew that person's name and you knew a little bit little bit about them and and it, it seemed natural to them to go ahead and put you through. Uh, that was a technique I used on in many different uh, cases, <clears throat> working in that type of very large uh, corporate structure situations with with all the high dollar involved. Uh, and I think that still works in in any uh, digital business. Even I know that sometimes because there's so many local uh, agencies that people have become a little gun shy at times uh, with the fact that you come in and say, well, you know, uh, I just looked at your social media and you've only posted once a week for the last six weeks. Uh, uh, that's not going to help you much. You need some help. Well, he's probably heard that once a week for the last six months uh, and he's, he doesn't care enough if or doesn't want to enough, or he's just simply doesn't know who to use. But the, the, the point of that all is to say that, Setting yourself apart is certainly one way. We know that there are some products being developed right now that help set you apart. Uh, but I still go full circle right back to the fact you need to reach the person in charge. Call and ask for the person in charge. Don't beat around the bush. Just call and do it. And that may sound simplified to some, but I, uh, I, learned, I learned it by, by fire as far as doing it. And I think it's a... Uh, the most effective way. So I'll, I'll hush and turn it back to you, Carl. Uh, I think I mentioned this before. Dwayne Cashin uh, teaches uh, the, your uh, salesman and saleswoman in uh, the manufacturing arena, and he loves voicemail. He thrives on getting a voicemail when he's asking for uh, the head honcho the, uh, the the key uh, woman in charge, whoever, because it gives him an opportunity to leave an uninterrupted message about who he is and about his product. And um, I think he said the uh, the longest, the most number of messages that he's ever left where he actually ended up getting uh, a, a, uh, a client out of it was 22 messages. <laughs> and um, when he actually got through this guy and he picked up once, um, he said that uh, the owner of the company said, we've been saving all of your messages because I'm using it to train my salespeople <laughs> about your tenacity. And um, Wayne qualified, Dwayne, I'm, I'm sorry, Dwayne Cashin, Dwayne qualifies himself as uh, when he, when he works with and teaches this crowd, his minimum level is uh, a company that's doing ten million dollars in sales on up. So that's 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 a pretty serious uh, crowd that he's dealing with uh, and training. So I thought that um, you know th those are really good points of tenacity. Where probably eighty percent of us are ready to give up after you know the second or third try. I guess I have to go back and readdress my home plate again. Um, I um I think uh, part of my problem is though I still believe in the fact that um, customer service should be something that's front and foremost. And if I go and call a company and I need a bat to get in the door to get somebody's attention, why why do they think that that's anybody wants wants to do business that way? Um, the state of Connecticut. Attorney General Blumenthal went after Northeast Utilities, which was our, our power company at the time in Connecticut, because nobody was picking up the phone at the, at, this, at the power company. Everybody was letting everything go to voicemail, and then they're, you know, well, we'll, we'll decide on who gets the actual call from there. And, and he took them to task, and he was on the 6 o'clock news ripping them one, and they had an attitude change overnight goes, you know what? We need to be able to make ourselves available again here. You're going to call, you're going to, and um, it worked. I have to say in that instance, it, it worked very, very well. But why do you have, 
why do you have to go to the point where um, you know you make yourself un unavailable so bad that uh, people cannot communicate with you? It shouldn't be that tough. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why it is, but it, maybe it's because we all have caller ID today. I don't know what the heck it is. What do you think, Chris? <laughs> well, I think it's a, just a sign of the times, my man. I, I know that there are a tremendous amount of uh, executives who do not, unless they know the person, they do not take the call on the first call. They, right. It, go, it go, does go to voicemail. And you're right, voicemail is a tremendous tool if it's used correctly and not just, oh, this is uh, Christopher uh, calling you about such and such. Uh, I'd like to set an appointment. Yeah, go into a little bit of detail. That, you know, that, that's certainly uh, an excellent point that you made. Uh, but let me kick this over, this question over. If Bob is on at all, Bob, kick your mic off here or put your mic on and give us a little feedback on your approach to getting to, to the decision maker. What, what do you do, my man? Uh, you may have just turned it on and just walked away, you know, had, had got, gone to get uh, a soft drink or something. No, he, there he is. <laughs> hey, Bob. Hey, guys. <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm still pretty under the weather, so I'm just trying to observe today, if you don't mind. That's right. That's right. Okay. No problem, buddy. That's that, he, did, uh, he told me earlier in the week that he had a, a real good bout with the uh, head cold in the process. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate it. All right, Carl? Yes, sir. What else is on your list of to-dos? Did you mention something about a unique uh, concept that you wanted to share or not? I was... I was thinking about this and I'm, and I'm looking for feedback from the group on it. This may be something for multiple discussions to get more people there. Cause obviously right now we don't have as many as we had before, but, um, I think an electron, I I'm thinking about an idea of creating a product that would be a, in the lines of the referral card system, but it, it would be a process where, let's say we get the Chamber of Commerce involved in this. Because the Chamber does, my Chamber anyways, will, if you ask them to make an introduction, um, they will make an introduction for you, which I think is a great opportunity for both the Chamber as well as the recipient, as well as the uh, receiving end. But I think, referral cards and i and i go back to my days when i was attending bni is do i have any other bni uh members or ex-members here nobody else has done bni i did bni when i was first to business and it's uh are we familiar with bni as a group oh yeah okay, business networking yeah, but we, we, don't, we don't mention bni in the chamber group you understand that right uh i don't know why but i mean <laughs> It, it there um so so you go to these meetings and what i didn't like about it is that if there's one realtor and i don't like the realtor what am i supposed to do am i supposed to refer that realtor and i think over a six month period of time you finally decided you know well do they what kind of value do they bring maybe you don't like them but they're good at what they do i think that the referral system is uh, extremely valuable, but there's got to be a way where it can be mechanized where I give a lead, I get points through the chamber getting, uh, giving the lead. The lead can be scored on a one to 10 from the, uh, the recipient involved or the chamber involved so that you know what kind of leads that you're giving. And, you know, if this gal is giving, you know, number one leads all the time, maybe they just need to be spoken to and say, look, we love your leads, but we need to get, you know, you a little more in depth and understanding what you're doing here in the referral, as opposed to, you know, hey, I just got in, I opened up and I closed the deal with uh, 22 banks and they're gonna do $22 million worth of business with me. So if you're, if you're a giver and a receiver, and you're both in the system, then it, then the system would record the gifts and, and the receives as well as the credits taking place in the chamber. So I'm, I'm tr I guess what I'm trying to do is the giving and the taking are great, but I wanna see how I can 
hook the chamber in there because if the chamber is involved too, and there's a benefit for them, then it will help facilitate this process as well. Judith, do you think that's a good idea? Good man, Carl, you caught me. I was listening to most of that, the last two sentences. I uh, answered a, a message. At least I'm honest. You're asking for, you're, at least I'm honest. You're looking for an opinion and I didn't hear the last two sentences. The, the, I, what I'm trying to do is I'm, and I'm trying to make this not just a win-win, but a win-win-win for three parties involved. I'm trying to see how the chamber can win at this because the, the chamber has always got to be selling themselves on the uh, values that they bring to the table. They're almost like the same thing as the credit unions. The credit unions are always fighting for attention over the banks and the credit unions are like, me, me, look at me over here. Well, okay, what, what, what do you bring to the table you know, other than what two business people can do together, what's the chamber going to do? So the, the chamber is always going to be bringing in some kind of new value to make themselves credible and, and, and thrive. You, you want that chamber to be able to thrive. If the chamber's thriving, then you know something's going on good there. If the chamber's dead, then you know that there's a problem there because it's a, it's a natural thing that takes place on a, uh, you're, you're connecting local businesses and you're always gonna need local businesses. I don't care what type of business it is. So what I'm saying is, what things do you think that the, the chamber can do and get out of it by facilitating through the referral card in, in, their, in that sport? Um, maybe somebody gets, you know, a, an award at the end of the year at the Chamber of Commerce dinner. Ah, hello. You know, Fred hit a thousand points with uh, the number of referrals that he gave. la dee da I, That wouldn't do it for me, but. Well, that, and, uh, and that's my point. What would do it for you? What, what, what would do that for you? Carl, while Judith is thinking, I'll jump in. Yes, me, I, I do. thought it was an interesting idea, um, not one that I'd really kind of contemplated. And I went to BNI for a while and was doing something very different and hated it. Um, just thought the whole thing was awful because I ran into the same thing you did. Oh my God, what do I do if I don't like these people and I don't think they're very good at their jobs? <laughs> anyway, um, it wasn't a great experience, but um, I, I, you know, the chamber's interesting mostly because you don't have that requirement like you know the bni thing was was hard because you had the requirement whereas nobody in the chamber uh, needs to be required but to be um have an opportunity to make great referrals if you're in the community and you have that opportunity and to be acknowledged for that i think everybody wants acknowledgement um and i think that it would get the chamber acknowledged for really bringing people together and um, I think for the people who are good at that or have an opportunity to do that, it would, um, you know, kind of be bonus points for, you know, you know they'd, they'd have an opportunity to really go, oh, yeah, I, could, I really did something that was valuable, as opposed to just doing something that they know they should do, right? Right. Right. So you, you incentivize, they're going to do more, right, Mary? Yeah, well, I mean, one of the things that I work on often, I build messenger bots for people, okay? And part of the um, whole joy of building messenger bots, and um, particularly messenger bots that build loyalty to a business, yeah. is to gamify the experience, right? Because we are all kind of interested in the games that allow us to get something for nothing. You know, it's a good deal when you can get something for nothing. And um, so we kind of start off the process with a contest and, and build out from there because the contest immediately attracts attention. Oh, good, something for nothing, right? Yippee, I can enter the contest. All I need to do is make a comment. Well, that's all on game theory. And um, because of that interest in, in gamifying everything, that we have going on in our universe today, 
it's um it's a real way to get people involved and bring them in and make it fun so that it's not a task they have to do but it's an opportunity and i think the more that you can bring games and gamesmanship and and things like that into it um i think that's a good thing and and that's what i heard kind of out of that suggestion carl very good <laughs> I think part of my struggle is is valuing the lead because um, for me to receive a lead and and let's say that I open up two clients, I can have one client that does you know a hundred dollars a year in sales, and the next one will do thirty thousand dollars. So it doesn't mean that the lead one lead was, um, you know, cooler than the other. They're both valuable in the fact that they were considered and placed, right? So how would you rate the lead on a, you know, on a scale of one to 10? And let's say at the end of the year, Judith, if, you're, if your membership with the Chamber of Commerce was comped for the whole year because of, the number of lead credits mm. that you processed, would that ring your bell? It would certainly help. I'm sorry? It would certainly help. It would certainly help. Okay, we're still getting, we got about a number six out of 10 out of Judith now. What do you, Mary, <laughs> what, what do you think of that? What What about? Judith has had too many Tylenol threes, okay? I'm just in too much pain. So I'm not reacting quite the way I would. <laughs> So you gotta keep that in mind. I'm poking you. I'm poking you. That oh, yeah. her reaction with the poke. Yeah. Mary, what do you think of that? Um, I think it's interesting, and I think maybe it's just a matter of allowing the recipient. Again, this goes back to kind of the game thing, right? Where the game, uh, the recipient can rank the lead on the basis of what they feel about it, right? Was yeah. the lead good for them? And that might um, generate a conversation about what would be a better lead and what's a, you know, I mean, if you suddenly had somebody who was like the leads master of the universe um, and, you know, so they were scattering leads everywhere and they started to get, you know, threes here and fives there and sevens there and tens there. Um, I'm sure they want to know how come Carl thought it was a two and, and Tom thought it was a eight and Joe thought it was a 10, you know, so what was the difference? And um, it was, you know, that was how Carl and Joe and Tom um, kind of marked them, but it would start conversations. And that way, um, I think that would be good in and of itself because it would start communication within the chamber. Yeah, and without, without the knowledge uh, of the, the getting down to the core value of what the business creates it, it becomes it, it can be again you know hard to be able to um not to give the lead but to consider who the person is that that you've got in mind here you know like for instance okay mortgage broker i i haven't closed on a house in how many years and i don't know what the experience of a mortgage broker is but somebody's got to teach me what the difference between a bad mortgage broker and a good mortgage broker is. I mean, I can imagine number one, the mortgage not closing all the time, that would be bad. Um, so I think that maybe that's, maybe, maybe the idea of the relationship between the, the, re, the two lead generator and the recipient needs to increase in, in, in understanding who they are better. Maybe maybe that's something there. Maybe the chamber needs to create a new position instead of vice president of wallpaper. Maybe they need to have somebody that's vice president of lead generation for the year, right? Let them run on that campaign, you know? Because uh, I think half of them don't even know how to give a lead. And um, the other gentleman before that's gone now was asking, you know, what happens when I run into a, an end marketer at a chamber, how do I break down his wall? Well, is that end marketer handing out leads to people in the chamber? That's a really good point because he's saying that, you know, he's running into a lot of people that all they want to do is like, you know, buy my business, buy my business. 
Uh oh, technical glitch. Are you there, Carl? I'm here. All right. Do you still hear me? Yeah, we still hear you. You know, we we've got uh, that's something that you need to refine and share with uh, share with us when you get get that boiled down to to the uh, to the foundation. I think it has some merit to it. Uh, it does follow the, yeah, I've got follow the old track of the BNI uh, concept, but uh, if it's incentivized, the chamber certainly would be good for it. The chamber of right. commerce is always good to uh, give referrals and give contacts because that's how you grow yourself into an influencer. And that uh, the foundation of connecting people, introducing people to each other, giving those referrals, all you're going to do is grow uh, in stature within the chamber itself, which then also leads to referrals for you. That's giving value. Uh, Carl, I guess we probably need to shut it off at this point, about an hour and 20 minutes, if uh, that's all right with you. Yeah, uh, sounds good to me. Just I before you do, Christopher, I'd love to hear from Joe, because Joe's into the chamber. No, um, no, 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 don't cut it off. Let it roll. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's into the chamber. Okay, oh, yeah. Joe. Uh, Joe, you can't be quiet because Mary's just the uh, out of you right here. So, what? Tell us a little bit about your chamber experience. I don't know, Mary. You may have to encourage him. Maybe Joe's gone for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Anyway, um, I thought it was a good conversation. I think there's definitely merit there. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Um, oh, and you know I'd certainly talk with you, Carl, if you'd like and, and, and help. You know, we can talk it through and, and, you know, hone it down. Because I think referrals are so valuable. Um, yeah. I mean, word of mouth is, is the most valuable thing you can give. But people have to get to know one another better to understand one another's business so that they can give decent referrals. And if you started out by being a referrer and you don't give a good referral, I mean, it would be great for the receiver to say, hey, thanks for the referral, I appreciate that. Here's the issue that I had or here's why it wasn't a great referral. Um, and if you find anybody like this, I'd love it. And by the way, what can I do for you? Like what kind of referrals do you need? Which you know, just get the conversation going. But I like the emphasis that it would put on getting referrals as an active part of the chamber. And you know what, you could, you know, I thank you so much for motivating me on this because I'm, I'm thinking more opportunities here. Like for instance, I keep coming back to what happens to the newbie, uh, the, the person that wants to start a business, our chamber doesn't offer a business one-on-one -on -one class of any type. Maybe if they were brand new and you teach them about leads, maybe they've given X amount of leads where they could actually discount part of their membership the first year uh, to help them in the process of, of, of being new and how to get off the ground. So Mary, maybe we should be handing out Dunkin' Donuts cards all day long. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Not Dunkin' Donuts, though. So, okay. Chains. <laughs> uh, okay. How about uh, Prag shoes? No, you don't want shoes. Uh, uh, we'll go to the local, we'll go to the local uh, bakery and get some goodies. How's that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sounds great. Because it's the locals that, that need the help. I don't know that the big brands really need all that much help, but I mean, they need help in their own way. But Rick, do you get leads? I actually do get leads and, and most of them are, well, not most of them, all of them are from referral based. What I'm, I make what it I'm, very, very, I'm sorry, go ahead. What I'm, what I'm trying to do here is kick around an idea that's an automated uh, slash manual process where it brings in the chamber as the third party involved in the lead generation aspect so that uh, it, it becomes more of a win-win-win all around. Well, the way it becomes a win-win-win, and there's certainly not enough time right here today to go into it, but I enter a, uh, an arrangement with the chamber that I make sure that it's a win-win-win, uh, win for me, win for them, win for their members, 
by introducing something called a non-dues revenue generator. Uh, uh, say it again? Non-dues revenue, where okay. I'm willing to share with the chamber uh, the profits that I make, because we all know chambers do not make enough money from membership. And that's why they have the multiple outings and golf uh, tournaments and Chinese auctions and whatever, because they need to generate more income right. to sustain themselves. So my approach, and again, limited time briefly, is to introduce a non-dues equity share with them. An equity share to the lead involved? Uh, to any product that I sell to their members. Okay. Not just the lead, not just the finder's fee, but if I'm selling a chamber a member, you know, XYZ price, there's an equity share in every sale to the chamber as a, a prerequisite and an approved program so that they will endorse it. They will promote me but I first need to make sure that they see the value in it right? and that they're using it for free. And what, what kind of, what kind of business do you operate? Uh, digital marketing services. Okay. All right. All right. That that's valuable right there. That's valuable right there because if you're not creating value, you're, you're tomorrow's price tag. Absolutely. And before I even approach, any main member, I make sure that I have a proof of concept with the chamber that my product is going to help them and, and it's given to them for free and then they understand the value of it and they believe in it and then they endorse it and we both make money. Right, right. Interesting. Again, a lot more to discuss perhaps at another point down the road under the guidance of Christopher, uh, but uh, would love to uh, get you in the loop of this. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Chris. Rick. Uh, thank you, Rick, and thank you, Mary. <laughs> thank you, Judith, Joe, Scott, and Chris. All right. <laughs> Don't All forget right. Bob. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> now, I think there's a... Uh, there's a whole lot uh, down beneath the surface on what Rick is talking about there. So, uh, and it has a has a lot of it has legs or it has wings, whichever one you want to want to put onto it. Uh, as far as the chamber is concerned, uh, anyone else have anything they'd like to ask or share? Carl, do you want to do you want do you want to put a few more things out there, or you or you think we're down to the end? What what's your what's your temperature over there? I'm just happy that Mary and Judith queued in today because they really have some good ideas, uh, and and now I, I'm I'm ready to go to my schematic and start drawing this thing out. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna start talking to my my IT designer, and um, th this guy is great. I'll tell you what, he he is fantastic. This guy programs. He runs his business based on philosophy, not on not on what's the best price for today. And he takes such good care of his clients. Um, he's incredible. And I would, I would put him up against the top 10 IT network administrators in the country because this guy is so sharp. So if I want to design something, um, I go to him and I say, here's what I'm thinking. And the next thing you know, we got something rolling. So I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely uh, kick this up to second gear with him. Well, I tell you what, since you uh, mentioned Mary, uh, she can help you put this whole concept into a bot and it'll probably travel faster. Interesting. A bot a bot concept for referrals. Now, Mary, there's something to work on right there. Referral. Oh bot. no, we use it all the time, all Re the time. Referral bots. Okay. Oh yeah, no, it's part of it's part of the loyalty bot for sure. Because if you're having a good time at a facility, we want you to tell your friends about it. I mean, that's the best thing that we can do. And we give people points and there's re there's referral rewards and everything. So yeah, referral bots are definitely the hot thing. So anybody wants a referral bot, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> now do you think, you think that same type of system could be worked into uh, uh, the chamber? 
and make and under the concept Carl's got going on? Well, you know, it's interesting when you when you said referral bots. I was thinking, you know, like a loyalty bot or something that like that for the chamber would um, might work well. But a referral bot, you know, that they could kind of track who's referring whom, et cetera, et cetera, to the chamber and to other people within the chamber. Something like that might be quite interesting. Yeah. All right. I have no voice, but I have to chime in here. Um, you guys share such incredible information all the time. I learned something from every one of these, um, Mary and uh, of course, Scott and Rick have got something going on that they'll, they'll share soon, but um, I completely agree with Mary's approach on the referral bot. Um, and I reached out to you, Mary, in a friend request. I'll share some things I'm doing. And then something that Carl said about brand new businesses coming in the chamber and kind of being lost. Um, you know, I have a concept I'm working on that would address that. Um, and I'm happy to share it when I get a little further along and, and can actually show you something online. Um, so I just want to say thank you to all of you for, you know, bringing forward these ideas and, and reminding me that we're, we're very much on the same wavelengths in, in a lot of respects. And these opportunities that Chris has put together for us to share those is, is just tremendous. Thank you all. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate oh, it. Feel better, Bob. Okay. Well, I'm let's show my face for a minute because otherwise I have bandwidth issues. So oh. I hide. Do you live in the country? Do you live <laughs> in the country? Know there was a real person here. <laughs> do, do you live in the country? <laughs> I live in the Pacific Northwest, as far northwest as you can possibly get. But anyway. Fantastic. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, everybody. It was All great right. meeting everybody. All right. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Take care. So with that, we will close it out for the day. Carl, our deepest appreciation for your carrying on and carrying through with the discussion on getting in front of the right people and getting past the gatekeeper and and of course, your ideas uh, on the referral program. I think that's that may have that may grow whether you like it or not. At this point, right? Exactly. You've got you've got several people right here. They're more than willing to jump in with you to get things going. So, I'm glad that things like this happen uh, in our training sessions because it isn't just about the training. It's about the com not the camaraderie, but the professional sharing of experiences between the extremely talented people that we have in our chamber group. And I appreciate everybody sharing their knowledge as the thing, as the, the, these training sessions go on. Thank you all. I hope to see all of you back on Wednesday of next week to be determined as far as the topic. See you guys. Have a good Thanks. one. See you next week. Thank you, Christopher. Bye, Chris. <laughs>